Now that we've talked about the best settings for time lapses, as well as the best settings for night lapses, it's time to talk about time lapses that go from day to night or night to day, otherwise known as the Holy Grail. If you'd like to check out my time lapse and night lapse videos, I have linked to them above. Now I've done a lot of experimenting with the GoPro with a lot of different settings to find what I like best. As I go through each of these settings, I will explain why the setting is the best so that you know why that setting has been chosen. The same basic fundamentals of a good time lapse will apply with day to night lapses as well. It's gonna be really important you have your camera on a tripod where it doesn't move and you'll also want it connected to some type of external power source if your time lapse will go longer than an hour and a half to two hours. Once you get to time lapse mode, you're going to want to click on this button at the bottom. And you're going to want to make sure you're in the night lapse mode, which will probably be down near the bottom for you. You're going to click on the edit button to the right of that. All right, once you're in there, you're going to see this menu of settings here. For that first setting, a format, you can select photo or video. If you want the most control over what your finished product looks like, you will want to select photo. Photo mode is going to give you a series of photos that you will then later edit and put together. I personally use Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Premiere Pro, but there are other options. Uh, that's just my preferred option because I find it to be the quickest. And both of these are also very powerful tools for me to get the results I would like. If you do select video there, I will go through the settings later on, but I'm going through the settings for photo first. So after you've selected photo, you're gonna go over to interval and you're gonna select 15 seconds there. Now the reason you want to select 15 seconds is because you want the interval between each photo to be the same. If you put auto for interval, the camera is going to decide how often to take a photo. And if you're doing this from day to night, it's going to take photos rapidly during the daylight, probably a half second to one second apart. But as it gets darker, it's going to take those photos further apart from each other, probably two seconds, then five seconds, then 10, then 15, and it might even go further. If you do that, your time lapse is going to look very weird because it's not going to be the same interval between each photo. So you're going to have time that appears to go faster or slower, and it's not gonna be continuous. Therefore, I definitely recommend setting a set interval there. Now, I recommend 15 seconds if you're going to have it go from daylight to full nighttime because that 15 second interval is going to ensure you get the best view of the stars or whatever else is in the nighttime sky. For shutter, you're gonna wanna select auto. By selecting auto, you're going to let the camera adjust the shutter speed. With the 15 second interval, it's gonna allow you to get up to a max of 15 seconds for the shutter. So when you have a nighttime sky, that's gonna allow it to let in plenty of light and show the stars and other features in the sky. For output, you want to make sure you select raw. RAW is going to give you the highest quality photos and this is going to give you a lot more control over the finished product when you go to edit. For scheduled capture, you'll want to keep that off. For duration, you will want to select no limit. For timer, you will want to select off. Once you get to ProTune, you want to make sure that's enabled. For EV Comp, I recommend selecting zero for this. If you were doing just a sunset, I would recommend putting negative 0.5 for EV comp, as this will allow that sunset to be less washed out. But since we're transitioning from day to night or night to day, you'll want to keep that at zero because EV comp will not handle the darkness well. For white balance, you have two options here. You can select auto, and auto will give you good results. However, I have done both auto and a set white balance, and I have found that I like it better when I set it at a specific value. In particular, I prefer setting it at 4,000. So here's the deal with white balance. If you have white balance set to auto, the camera will adjust the white balance as the daylight changes. So the camera will decide what white balance is correct for which lighting scenario. Now the danger with this is the camera can switch that white balance at any time. So if at sunset, if you have clouds going across the sun, it could adjust the white balance to one value. For instance, it could bump it to 5,000, 5,500, or 6,000 K. But then when the sun comes back out, it could change the value again. 
For instance, when the clouds go over the sun, it could adjust the white balance to 4000 or 4500K. But when the sun comes back out, it could put those values back up to 5000K or 5500K. And then when the sky gets dark, it could do the same thing if you have a moon in the sky, the white balance values may keep switching. So I don't recommend setting the white balance to auto, but I do recommend setting it to 4000K if you're going to have some of the nighttime sky in there. Now you can always change the white balance later on. If you have it set to a specific value, it's going to make it much easier for you to change some of the photos versus trying to change them if it's auto. Because like I said, one photo to the next could have a completely different white balance value if you leave it at auto. I'll show you in an example here. In this example, the white balance was at auto and I feel like the lighting kept bouncing back and forth in that sky. But in this next example, I had the white balance set to 4000K and I feel like it stayed consistent and looks a lot better. But again, you can experiment and choose, but my ultimate recommendation for this is setting a specific value. And my preferred value is 4000K. For ISO minimum, you wanna make sure that's set at 100. That way, when it is daylight, your camera can maximize that ISO minimum to get the clearest quality footage. For ISO max, you can set that to 800, but I do not recommend going over 800 as your footage will begin to get quite noisy, anything above 800. For sharpness, I recommend setting that to low. You can always add sharpness later on when you're editing the photos. In color, I recommend setting that to flat. That will allow you to have maximum control over the saturation and other color features in your photos. And this bottom section is shortcuts that will not apply here. All right, now that we've done the photo mode, we're gonna move on to the video mode. I'm gonna go back up here to the top. And for format, if you would like to do video and have the camera create the time lapse within the camera, you're gonna select video. Once you've done that, you're gonna see the resolution option appear. For resolution, you wanna make sure that is set to the highest possible, which in our case will be 4K. For interval, you're going to want to adjust that. As with the photo settings, I recommend setting the interval for video to 15 seconds as well. With shutter, you're gonna to wanna to keep that at auto. That way the camera will adjust the shutter as the lighting conditions change. For scheduled capture, you will keep that off. For duration, you will set no limit. And for timer, you're gonna to wanna to change that as well. You're gonna to wanna to turn that off. For ProTune, you're gonna to wanna to change the bitrate from standard to high. That's going to ensure you get the highest quality results. For EV Comp, you're gonna to wanna to keep that at zero. For white balance, if you don't want to do any editing at all, I recommend leaving it at auto. But if you would like to do some editing of the video, I do recommend changing this to a set value. My recommendation would be 4000K for the white balance. For ISO min, you'll want to keep this at 100 so that you get the highest quality results in the daylight. And for ISO max, you want to set it at 800 at the highest. This will help keep the noise at a healthy level so that your finished product will still look good without too much of that noise. For sharpness, you'll want to set that to medium for video. And for color, you have a choice here. If you keep it at GoPro, the camera will select the colors that it thinks is best for the particular setting. GoPro has come a long way with their color science and the results are actually pretty good. Uh, if you want to edit later on, I do recommend selecting flat still. If you want a simple holy grail time lapse that you don't have to edit, then I recommend keeping it at GoPro. And then this section down here will not apply. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to communicate with you below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and bell notification so that you'll be notified each time I publish a new video. Till we talk again, happy time lapsing.